Hello everyone, my name is Gabrielle Krefker and I'm the JavaScript and TypeScript Tooling PM here at Microsoft. Today I'll be presenting to you the new JavaScript and TypeScript experience that we are trying to bring to you in Visual Studio. To get started, we're going to talk about why Visual Studio needs a new JavaScript experience. From there, we're going to talk about the features that we plan on bringing with this new experience, show two demos, one that caters to creating just a new JavaScript experience overall, and then how to actually link up this new JavaScript experience with a .NET Core project. And then from there, we're going to talk about some additional tooling that's available to enhance this experience, as well as what's to come. Why we need a new JavaScript experience in Visual Studio? Well, we've heard you all, we've heard the complaints, and we understand that there is a lack of support for front-end frameworks, a lack of support for JavaScript testing, as well as no way to properly manage your node packages, and there's this constant struggle between switching between VS Code and Visual Studio to do front-end development versus back-end development. And we've heard a lot of people just want to stay in one. So we figured, why not try to improve our experience? Some planned features we want to bring you is first CLI-based templates. So currently, right now, Visual Studio does support Angular, React, and Vue. A big complaint we've got there is that our templates seem to be out of date and not constantly updated as these front-end frameworks tend to update themselves. So we figured, why should we build it when they've already built it for you? Instead, we decided to bring you projects and new templates that are built from the CLI version you have installed on your computer currently. So Visual Studio will no longer be manually making them for you, but instead using the tools already on your computer to create a new project. Next, we want to make sure we're able to bring JavaScript unit testing to the Test Explorer. So we have brought in support for Jasmine, Jess, Mocha, and Tate. Then we understood that there's a lot of support around NuGet and the NuGet package manager within Visual Studio. However, how is that helping our JavaScript community? So we decided to bring in a console that'll help you search, import, and manage your known module packages in your JavaScript projects. And lastly, we did hear a lot about users switching between VS and VS Code and how sometimes that can be a little hard to get a project started in one and debug in the other. So we decided to actually bring in a feature that's very similar to that in VS Code, which is a launch.json. It'll be pre-configured for you and it'll allow you to debug and run your projects between both editors seamlessly. Enough with talking about it. Why don't I just show you how all of this works? So let's just start with creating a new JavaScript project in Visual Studio. So first, we're going to actually create a new project as normal. And to find these templates, we're actually going to filter by TypeScript or JavaScript. Either one would work. So we're going to scroll to the bottom, and you'll see your new Angular, new React, and new View templates. We're simply going to select new Angular today, give it a name as normal. And once you press Create, you're going to see this command prompt. This will happen for all three of the frameworks that we currently support. And this command prompt is just simply showing that these are actually being built from the CLI. So it needs the command prompt to actually run. Now that the project is up and running, let's start maybe by building it. The build is going to take a while because we're actually going to run an NPM install, which can take a bit of time. So while it's doing that, let's explore some things that might be a little bit different as we're going through this new project type. First, let's open up the project file. First, at the bottom, we have a different type of target that is used to check if Node is installed for users and to make sure that NPM install does occur when a project is built. Next, if you look at the property group a little bit above that, you'll notice that we are actually bringing in what JavaScript test framework will be used for this project. Because it is Angular, it will be Jasmine. But if you decide to use something else like Jest or Mocha, once you add them to your project, they'll be automatically added to your project file. Next, you can also see above that your startup command, which in this case is npm start. And that is actually coming from the package.json that is created within this project. If we keep going and we open up the properties, you can then see that nothing is really needed in your build command. As we mentioned before, all that's happening during your build is an npm install. To deploy your project, we already stated that your startup command will be npm start, but you can edit it to match any other valid node command line prompts, or you can simply edit what the npm start command is in your package.json. Next, when we look at the debugging, we need to make sure that the debugger that we want to launch is based off of your launch.json. That is actually important because I mentioned we are now going to the system where you can run and debug your projects in both VS and VS Code easily. Your launch.json will be pre-configured, so you won't have to make any changes for you out of the box. But if you do want to go in there and edit it, feel free. If we take a look at our package.json, we'll notice that it's actually very similar to a package.json you've noticed. It is the default package.json from creating your Angular application if you're just doing ng new. 
And so when we do npm start in the deploy command, it is simply running the npm start on line six, which will just do a simple ng serve. And if we open up our launch.json, you notice that we only have two default configurations, which is just simply to launch in Chrome or launch in Edge. It'll launch at a localhost of 4200, uh, but feel free to change that if you would like to do a different port. So now our build should be complete, and we're actually going to run the project. We're simply going to choose what we'd like our browser to be and then launch. At the bottom, you can see that npm start is actually running, and you do see an ng serve beginning. And just like that, you have an Angular app up and running. And the cool thing about it is we do have live reloading. So I'm just gonna simply go in and change a quick file. Let's maybe try main.ts and add an alert. Once we add this alert and we actually save it and reload the project, you'll then see the alert pop up. This is all done without having to stop the project um, and rebuild it. Now I'm gonna try to debug it Add a small little breakpoint and see how that works. Once the project is reloaded, you see that, oh, okay, there's been a small stop. We're going to hit continue. And our debugging is letting us continue. And by hitting the continue button, we are now done debugging our one line of code. So next, let's move into something a little different. We mentioned the test explorer. So it's actually a really big deal. So let's move over now to an actual test file. Within Angular applications, you'll always have your app.component.spec.ts when you're doing an ng new. So we're simply gonna have these three tests on line 13, 19, and 25 run in the test explorer. So let's do test, test explorer, And you see once we open up our test and it's doing test discovery, it's going to do another small compilation of the Angular project, just as if Jasmine was running. Perfect. Now we're done processing and you'll see the test pop up in the test explorer. All three have been discovered. If we open it up, you'll see that the titles all do match. So should render title is the same as should render title in the spec.ts file. And now if we run all three of them, we haven't made any changes, so everything really should be building just fine and testing just fine. And let's see what happens. Perfect, all of our tests have passed. And that is how you can use the test explorer now with JavaScript unit testing. Now let's go into the next demo of actually creating a .NET Core and Angular project, but using the new JavaScript project type. It's been a lot of work around .NET Core and how it'll actually be working with a front end. So there's been some new proxy work. So there'll be a little bit more additional files than what you're used to seeing from previous versions. So first we're gonna start and create a new project as usual. From there, we're going to look up Angular. And I'm actually going to start with a .NET Core with Angular project. So give it a name, hit next, just as usual, nothing crazy. Now that the project is open, we see that this is kind of very similar to what we're used to seeing. We have our .NET Core application with a client app folder inside of it. Well, we're going to change this up just a little bit. So the first thing you want to do before you make any major changes, though, is you do want to restore your NuGet packages. Perfect. Now that that's done, we can now start to make some major changes. So next, we're going to right click on the solution and do add new project. And then we're going to type in Angular again. And we're going to bring in that new Angular template. Give it a name and hit Create. 
Once again, we still see that same command prompt let us know that the CLI is actually working and building the template from scratch. Now we have this Angular project and we have this .NET Core project. So the first thing that we're actually going to do to make this a little bit easier is actually take all of the contents out of the client app and move it to the front end application. And simply just hit yes as we're going to replace everything. Currently, these two templates are one to one. Only thing that's been additionally added is the proxy work that we've mentioned before. So now our source files will be the same as far as having the same front end um, for like the weather forecast and things like that. And now we can actually delete the client app folder out of the .NET Core project. We no longer need that. But now we do have to make some changes. So the first thing we want to actually edit is that launch.json. By default, not net core will actually be looking to open up its front end at port 5002 and we have to make sure that we are using https instead of http once our launch.json is edited we can then move on to making changes within the .NET Core project. So first you want to open up that CS project and you can honestly remove all of this as it's no longer needed because our front end is now sitting within a different project type and the proxies, the proxying between the front end and the back end is happening from the front end, not from the back end. So all you need is what target framework you're currently using. And in this case, we're doing .NET Core 6.0. From there, we then need to actually change our properties of the .NET Core project, just so we can simply say, do not launch a browser. So go to debug and uncheck launch browser. So now the only browser being launched will be coming from the front end, not from the front end and the back end. Once we've done that, we can then right click on a solution as a whole, and we actually need to edit which startup projects we will be using. So currently the .NET Core project is a startup project, but we actually need to have both of them start up at the same time. I normally move the front end to the top just in case Visual Studio does some weird thing where it starts one then the other. So I wanna make sure the front end is happening first since that's where the proxy work will be coming from. All right, and now let's run it. And once we run it, we'll kind of see the same very similar uh, tasks being run with npm start, though our npm start might be a little bit different, and that is because the proxy work has added some changes to our launch.json. You can now see our proxy is created at localhost 5001. And now we just wait for the magic to happen. So we have our browser popping up at 5000 port 5002 and then you also see another command prompt and that is just simply the back end actually starting up in .NET Core doing what it has to do. So to make sure we have everything correct, we actually are going to look at our fetch data which is supposed to be coming from .NET Core. However, if we stop it and just make sure this is real, we're going to go to our weather forecast and we're going to actually put a breakpoint and start it up again. So now 5002 is loading. That's great. Let's go to fetch data. And now our weather forecast has caused us to pause. We're going to hit continue a few times until we get back to the browser. And now that that's done, you see that all of the weather data has been actually pushed to the front end. So we are now aware that the front end and the back end are both connected. And I know it might seem a little weird as to, well, why are we copying and pasting? all these files from one to the other. It's just simply because we have the weather forecast already there in the front end of the .NET Core project and we don't want to rebuild it all from scratch, though you absolutely could. Switching over the client app from the .NET Core project into the Angular JavaScript project actually will then allow you to have access to the JavaScript tooling that we're now making available. Without it, you'll just have simply TypeScript and JavaScript files, but you won't be able to use the additional tooling that's available in the JavaScript project type. So now that we've completed the demos, why don't we talk about some additional tooling that'll actually help improve that JavaScript and TypeScript experience. So I did mention that there will actually be a way to search, import, and manage your NPM module packages 
within Visual Studio. However, I was showing you a few prototypes and that feature has not been brought completely to Visual Studio yet. However, this is exactly what it will look like. So it will be very similar to what the NuGet package manager currently looks like right now when you open it in Visual Studio. You'll be able to search, um, you'll see a description, and you'll be able to just simply click install package and you'll be able to see all your packages in the solution explorer that you have installed um, via Visual Studio. So that is soon to come. But if you do want to enhance your experience a little bit more when you're using this, something I would suggest is actually downloading the NPM Task Runner Explorer extension. Um, it is available in the extension marketplace actually now. It is an extension that will allow you to actually run your NPM scripts like you know NPM start, um, NPM build, things like that actually with in Visual Studio instead of having to open a command prompt um, if there's ever anything that you feel like is missing from Visual Studio. So it is actually available now, but it doesn't exactly work the way you might want it to with .NET Core projects, being that the package.json is so far nested um, that it's hard for the extension to find it. However, with the new JavaScript project type, the package.json can be found a lot easier and you can actually run the scripts just like how it shows in this picture below. Another extension that might actually be great for anyone that will be using the new JavaScript project type and doing Angular development at all is the Angular language service extension available within Visual Studio. This is also now available in the marketplace and it does work well with .NET Core projects. As long as you have some type of Angular project in Visual Studio, this extension would work. And so what's next? Well, we're hoping to release this new project type by the end of the summer. Um, so please be on the lookout for that as I'm super excited of what's to come and the experience that it will bring to front end developers in Visual Studio. With this new experience, we have a promise to bring continuous support for JavaScript and TypeScript frameworks with the ones that we currently have, making sure that everything stays up to date but as well to support any new booming and up and coming frameworks that might be taking the world by storm. We also promise to do the same for any JavaScript and TypeScript unit testing frameworks, um, as we wanna make sure Visual Studio stays up to date with the proper tooling needed. Um, and as we move forward, we do wanna see continuous improvements to the .NET Core Spa experience. Um, we do have a couple plans for that, such as hopefully one day uh, the two project solution comes out of the box. We don't have a timeline for that, but it is something that we're looking forward to and researching. However, if you feel like we're missing anything in our experience so far, anything that you would love to see, please submit your feedback and ideas to aka.ms forward slash JSPS. I'd love to hear what any ideas you would like to see within this new JavaScript experience and let me and my team know what we can do better for you. Thank you.